Hi everybody, really important video this one, the gains from free trade. Um, in this video we're going to understand why organisations like the World Trade Organisation really strongly promote the idea of free trade. And by free trade I mean trade between countries without any barriers getting in the way, like tariffs, quotas, embargoes, domestic subsidies, red tape. None of that exists when there is free trade. On the right hand side I've written down all the theoretical advantages of free trade. And then later on, I'm going to apply some of those points to a free trade diagram. So let's understand what some of the benefits of free trade are. You'd expect with free trade, there will be greater efficiency in the world market, but more importantly, there will be an improvement in the allocation of world resources. Why is that? Well, when there is free trade, there is a great incentive for nations to specialise and to produce goods and services where they have a cost advantage. Basically, where they are best at producing specialise in those areas, produce those goods and services. Because the, you can supply your domestic market, yes, but you also have a world market you can sell to. So there is a great incentive to do so. And don't worry about producing goods and services you're not going to produce it, because with free trade you can just import those products. So in terms of the allocation of resources, resources are going to be going to countries who are best at producing, who are most efficient at producing those goods and services. Very good for the world allocation of resources and for solving the basic economic problem. That idea is known as the law of comparative advantage for countries to specialise purely in the goods and services where they have a cost advantage, more specifically an opportunity cost advantage. If you don't understand this concept, watch my video on comparative advantage where I go through it in my new detail. So that's a huge benefit there. Second, while countries can actually gain access to goods and services that they couldn't have produced in their own economy. So without free trade, the UK, for example, would not be able to supply the market for bananas. We can't produce bananas in the UK at all, we just don't have the climate. But of course with free trade we can import bananas and satisfy the demand that is out there for bananas in this country. Okay, so access for goods and services that wouldn't have been available without free trade suddenly become available. That's good for consumers, it's also good for producers, for businesses who can access raw materials from countries and from markets which would have been closed without free trade. Uh, consumers benefit from lower prices. This is a very strong point. With lower prices and increasing consumer surplus too. Now, we can argue that these lower prices come from various different avenues. And these different avenues I've written down here are themselves advantages of free trade. So, with free trade, there is a huge amount of competition. There is international competition now which we would expect will lead to greater efficiency, lower costs, and therefore lower prices. The generic arguments of competition. Very strong argument on its own. <coughs> the economies of scale benefits, again, can be absolutely huge. Now suddenly that businesses are actually supplying a much larger market size. So now the kind of output, the kind of quantities being produced might be so large that the gains from economies of scale might be so large, leading to lower average costs, potentially leading to lower prices too. And technology transfers become real with free trade. Um, nations and businesses can access goods and services, can copy and replicate technology much easier, can actually see how technology is advancing and react to that much faster when there is free trade. And that again can lead to greater efficiency, more investment, lower prices. You'd expect greater consumer choice with free trade, absolutely. Consumers as well have access to a much greater market much greater quantities if they want it, a much larger choice out there of products and services for them to consume. And economic growth, so if countries do specialise in the production of goods and services where they have this comparative advantage, then suddenly they can not just supply the domestic market, they can supply the world market. So the gains from exports become massive. And we know X minus M is a key component in the aggregate demand equation. So if exports increase massively from free trade, then that can largely increase economic growth and improve the current account position uh, for a given nation. Let's apply some of these concepts to a diagram now. So this is, let's just say, the Brazilian market for coffee. And this is without free trade at the moment. So we have the price of coffee, the quantity of coffee, uh, Brazilian supply, Brazilian demand. Where the two meet, we have the price in Brazil and the quantity supplied in Brazil. But let's say Brazil opens up to free trade now and it allows world supplies to come in. What's that going to do to this market? Well, the world supply curve is going to look very different. It's going to look like this. 
supply the world. Why have I drawn it horizontal? I've drawn it horizontal because world supply is so large that actually for world supplies to produce the quantities in just the Brazilian market is so easy that world suppliers don't need increases in price to actually supply greater levels of quantity, like domestic uh, Brazilian suppliers do. World suppliers, we're assuming here, have the comparative advantage, which implies that they can sell at a lower price called PW. And because they're so efficient to supply these quantities in the Brazilian market, it's so easy, they don't need rises in price. They can supply all these quantities at the same price happily because they have the advantage. And that leads to a lower price, a PW as well. Okay, so the supply curve horizontal with a lower price. That's the world supply. So opening up a market to free trade brings in more supplies, brings in the fact that countries with a comparative advantage can produce. And we're assuming here that Brazil do not have the comparative advantage in producing coffee. So how does that change the market condition? Well, previously domestic supplies are Q1. Now with a lower price, Brazilian, Brazilian supplies are willing and able to supply less. Makes sense. At a lower price, the incentive to supply is less. But Brazilian consumers are more willing and able to buy now because the price is lower. So demand in Brazil extends to Q3. Can we apply some of these points? Well, we can certainly apply point three, can't we? Lower prices. So with free trade, countries that have the comparative advantage can now export to, let's say, Brazil here. And Brazilian consumers benefit from lower prices, absolutely. They benefit from also greater consumer choice. Suddenly quantities in the market have increased. The amount that consumers can buy increased. And also the variety. So buying from world suppliers now. The kind of range of coffee that can be bought by Brazilian consumers has increased massively too. So greater consumer choice, greater quality. Economic growth. We can't really see that from the diagram, but what we can say is that world suppliers suddenly have a new market to export to. So for world supplies, that can increase their growth. That's a good thing as well. We can look at uh, this diagram in terms of efficiency gains, but I'm going to do that in a different video. We can also look at the consumer surplus and the producer surplus impact here. So in blue, the initial consumer surplus in the Brazilian market was this blue triangle here. Okay. But now, with lower prices coming in from world suppliers, what's happened to consumer surplus? Well, from that blue triangle, it's now increased, hasn't it, to this much bigger blue triangle. So consumer surplus has increased. That's a good thing. What about producer surplus? Well, I can look at that in red. Producer surplus was initially this red triangle. Okay. So consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve above the price. Producer surplus is the area uh, above the supply curve below the price. So from this big red triangle, what is it now? It's now this much smaller red triangle. Okay. So producer surplus for domestic producers has gone down because of the lower price. But for consumers, domestic Brazilian consumers here, surplus has increased with the lower price. Okay. So all the gains there, important for you to know and to analyse to understand where they come from. And the diagram to go with it, which is just, just as important. This diagram is very useful for protectionism related policies coming later. Okay. And make sure when you use diagrams, you relate to quantities and to price, and you link to consumer and producer surplus effects as well. Thanks for watching this very important video. See you next time.